Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Facebook Live. My name is Rachel and I am an environmental educator here at Sea Turtle Inc. Sea Turtle Inc. is a nonprofit organization and Sea Turtle Hospital here in South Padre Island, Texas. Now today is National Endangered Species Day and I wanna talk a little bit about one of my favorite endangered species, which is the Atlantic Green Sea Turtle. Now, if you all did not know, all sea turtle species worldwide are threatened or endangered to go extinct. And today we're going to be seeing some Atlantic green sea turtles that have just arrived to our hospital. In the past two days, we've gotten in two brand new patients and I wanna talk a little bit about their story and how they ended up at our hospital. As always, let me know where you're tuning in from. I always like to see where our viewers are from. It's really cool because we get people from all over the world watching these videos. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me turn the camera around and show you the first patient I wanna talk about, which is Vienna. Vienna came in yesterday and was found by one of our ATV patrollers who happened to be Dan, one of our conservation interns this summer. Now, it, these turtles are actually named by the person who finds them. So Dan was able to name Vienna. Now, Vienna is an Atlantic green sea turtle, as I mentioned previously. We think Vienna washed up because Vienna happens to be in a debilitated state. So what that means is we do lots of tests when our patients first come into the hospital. One of those tests, for example, is measuring the glucose in their blood, so their blood sugar level, essentially. And that was really, really low. We also do additional tests. We take blood work. Uh, we take blood samples to figure out things like PCV, which is packed cell volume, looking at the red blood cell count. And Vienna's red blood cell count happened to be below normal levels. Now, Vienna also has an old healed injury to the top part of the shell, which we call the carapace. So we're not sure if that's what's causing this sort of debilitated state. We're not really sure exactly what caused Vienna to wash up. And that is just sometimes what happens. Sometimes the injury or illness is very obvious to the eye. Other times it's sort of a mystery. And we just know we have to treat this patient for the injuries we can identify. So this here is Vienna. I do also want to show you all our brand new patient. This is Silver, who was named by one of our rehabilitation interns this summer, Melanie. What you'll notice is a few differences. One, Silver is just sort of laying here. Uh, this is what we call a depressed state, right? So sometimes we'll get patients in and they are sick or injured and they're very, very active but this would be a depressed state, so we know this turtle is not feeling very well. Silver was actually found stuck in the rocks at the jetties, the Isla Blanca jetties. If you are familiar with our island, you know the Isla Blanca jetties are a popular spot for people to go enjoy the beach and also go fishing. Those rocks at the jetties are a very popular spot for sea turtles, so not only people enjoy going there, sea turtles do as well, and that is because of all the algae in those rocks. They love munching on that algae, but unfortunately, sometimes when the tide goes out, or like yesterday we had, or two days ago now, we had that crazy storm. So that could have caused Silver to get stuck in those rocks. Luckily, Silver was found by a visitor and then brought into the hospital where it was named by Melanie. Now what you'll notice is that Silver has some moderate abrasions to the shell here, the carapace as I call it at the top part of the shell, also on the head. And then of course, I'm not gonna flip silver over, but on the bottom part of that shell, the plastron, we are also saw some modern abrasions. So it could have been from the rocks, could have been from something else, but overall, these two will be receiving similar care. What that means is x-rays. We'll continue to check their blood work, make sure they're healing properly. And we will also give them antibiotics, fluids, and vitamins. Now, as I show you and talk a little bit more about these patients, let me go back and see if there are any questions. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in. I see some of you are tuning in from Texas, Iowa, Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Hi, Shelly, I'm from Pennsylvania too. Hi to Sam, our wonderful cashier. My sister and dad are on, hello everyone. Hi, Connie. I see some other people from Pennsylvania, that's super cool. If you all have any questions about these patients and their stories, please let me know. As I said, we just got them in in the past two days. Sometimes in one week, you know, we'll get 
no patience. Sometimes in one week we might get three or four. It really just depends on what's going on out there. If you all come visit the island, you'll want to keep an eye out for any washed up sea turtles. Essentially, sea turtles should not be out of the ocean here on our island. They spend all of their time in the water. They only come in to nest. So if you see a sea turtle out on the beach, it probably means it's either sick, injured, or nesting, and we cover all three of those. If you do happen to find a washed up sea turtle, report it to our phone number. There's also an emergency line available on the front page of our website. You'll see a little silver here. It's just hanging out. Now, if you all are wondering, hmm, why is Vienna in water and why is silver out of water? Typically with our patients, the first day they come in, especially if they're in a weakened or depressed state like this, we will do what we call dry docking. What that means is we will keep them out of water because sea turtles have lungs just like you and I do, so they are holding their breath the entire time they're underwater. And when they're in this weakened state, it can be difficult on their body to sort of lift their head to take a breath. Um, and they can even drown in that condition. So to keep them safe, we'll keep them out of water. There are some things we consider. For example, we will always apply lubrication to the eyes. So this patient, actually, if you take a close look, you'll see there's some ointment on those eyes. That is eye lube. So we want to make sure we keep their eyes moist. But aside from that, you know, we will then put them the next day in some water, see what their reaction is. If they're still very weak and not moving around, we will keep that water very, very shallow just to keep them safe. If they happen to be doing really well and they seem to perk up in the water, we can put some more water in the tank and see how they start swimming around. Let's see if I have some questions. Was she struck by a boat? Great question. We're not sure what caused these abrasions. They seem to be pretty superficial, so it does not look like a typical boat strike. Usually what we'll see with a boat strike is the propeller marks will go like this on the shell. But we're not sure. See, what are the ages of these two turtles? Good question. So we can only estimate their age based on their shell size. These are both juvenile turtles, so they're between, you know, two to five years old or so. This particular species can grow to 500 pounds and grow to over 100 years old. So these are young, young turtles, only a couple years old. I will also go over here to this tank so you all can see Vienna again. So you'll see Vienna, what I was talking about earlier, this is pretty shallow. So we don't wanna put Vienna in too deep of water yet since she is still sort of in a weakened state. We wanna make sure she's comfortable. You'll notice she's slightly buoyant on the right side. So one of the first things our vet team does is take an X-ray and there was some abnormal things on Vienna's X-ray. So we will try to see what happens as she continues treatment. Dave asks, what age do they start breeding? It will depend on the species. So for Kemp's Ridley sea turtles, the turtles that we see nesting primarily on South Padre Island, it'll be between like 10 to 15 years old. For other species such as Atlantic greens, it can be more in the 20s. Lauren's pointing out the beautiful shell patterns. I agree, Atlantic green sea turtles have such beautiful shells. We call this a sunburst pattern. So if you take a close look, you'll see it almost looks like sun rays. What's interesting though is this coloration will vary greatly. So it can be brown, it can be more yellow or orange. Uh, there's lots of different color variations within this species. Atlantic green sea turtles get their name because of what they eat. So the seagrass they eat, the algae they eat, that will turn their fat green from the chlorophyll, but it's not because they themselves are green. Sort of a fun fact. See, lots of you are tuning in. We have some of the interns hopping on here. Hello to all of our wonderful interns. We do have an excellent internship program. If any of you are young uh, marine biologists or conservationists, it's a really, really great way to get started in this field. That is actually how I am here. I was a former intern. That internship runs from March until August. So if any of you are interested in that, that opportunity we usually post in the fall for the positions. Thank you so much to everyone who's tuning in. I'm gonna pan over here. Uh, this is Chris, who is our rehab specialist. He is hard at work here, uh, just prepping for the week. Uh, there's lots of prep and hard work that goes into taking care of these animals. The rehab team does everything from 
you know, taking x-rays to prepping seafood to cleaning up poop <laughs> to administering medications. They work really, really hard to keep our animals healthy and help get them back out into the ocean as soon as possible. Justice asked, what's this turtle's name? So this one is Silver, who was named by Melanie. And over here we have Vienna, who was named by Dan. Both uh, once some of our wonderful interns this summer. How much food do they eat in a week? Great question. So typically we feed about one to 2% of their body weight in food every single day. And we will monitor that percentage. So if they come in and they're in poor body condition, so that meaning they're a little skinny, we're gonna do a higher percentage, right? If they're already in good body condition, we can keep that number a little lower. Our rehab staff will actually watch every single patient and note how much they ate and how quickly they ate because if you guys have been to our facility, you know we keep some of, or multiple patients in the tanks. So for example, if we put Silver out there with Vienna and Silver ate all of the food, we can of course relocate Silver to a different tank so Vienna gets some time to actually feed properly. Great questions, everyone. A lot of you are watching. Thank you all so much for tuning in and celebrating Endangered Species Day with us. Can they eat while they are dry, dry docked? Excuse me. No, we will typically only feed them when they are in the water. Really great questions. And of course, we deliver medications, you know, through um, syringes and needles, but we can also put vitamins in their food. So every single morning, our rehab team, when they're prepping the food, they will actually stick some oral um, vitamins in, and if any of them need to receive oral antibiotics, we will also do it through the food. They actually get shrimp, squid, and fish here at the facility, and this species, since they are Atlantic green sea turtles, they also get veggies. So they get cucumber, zucchini, bell pepper, and lettuce. So, a really great diet. As you can all imagine, things like medications, uh, blood work, especially when we send it to the lab, uh, food, all of these costs add up. We are a nonprofit organization. If any of you are interested in sponsoring a particular animal, maybe you connected with Silver or with Vienna, they are up for adoption. So you can sponsor one of these patients. All of that money goes straight to the animals to help pay for their food, medications, things like that. So if you are interested in those adoptions, we will have a link to our website where you can see you can adopt hatchlings, you can adopt patients, residents. Lauren asked, do we have any loggerheads in right now? No loggerheads currently in our hospital. We did have two, but we released them uh, pretty recently. So right now in the hospital, we just have Atlantic green sea turtles and three Kemp's Ridley sea turtles. But on site, you can see a loggerhead sea turtle. Fred, our resident loggerhead, he's about 220 pounds. He lives here with us, so you will be able to see a loggerhead if you come to the facility. Really great questions, everyone. So you'll see he's still pretty still. So as I said, this is pretty normal. Uh, this is what we call a depressed state. This guy's probably just very tired from fighting being out in the rocks. Denise is asking about the adult male Kemp's Ridley that washed up on the beach last Thursday. Unfortunately, that male Kemp's Ridley did not make it. Um, sadly, you know, we're not able to save every single patient. Uh, that turtle came in very debilitated, so, so skinny. Um, you know, we did all of our tests with, uh, with blood work and everything, and all of the levels were not at what we would want as far as, like, appropriate health. So, unfortunately, that patient did not make it. It's a difficult part of our jobs here, but something we have to accept. And that was a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. If you guys are on the island or are coming to visit the island, of course, keep an eye out for any washed up, sick or injured sea turtles, but also for any nesting sea turtles because we are currently in nesting season. It started in April. We had a nest a nesting sea turtle yesterday, so fingers crossed maybe we got some nests today, but we are in full swing here as far as nesting season. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtles nest during the day, so if you come and hang out on the beach, there's a chance you could see one of them come up and nest. If you do, please call us immediately so we can get there as soon as possible to not only help the mamas, but also the nest 
All nests that are laid here on our island will be excavated and relocated to our corral for protection. I know it seems unlikely if you come to our island that you would see a washed up sea turtle, whether uh, it's sick or injured or a nesting sea turtle, but most of our patients are called in by members of the public. All right, so I'm not seeing too many more questions coming in. If you guys are watching this not in real time, but maybe in a few hours or the next day, please feel free to type in your questions and I will answer them or uh, one of our staff members will get to answer them in the next 24 hours or so. Denise, thank you so much for asking about that patient. We appreciate um, your concern. Oh, I see a question here from Gavin. Thank you for your question, Gavin. What is the oldest turtle you've helped? Oh, really good question. So at the facility, currently we have two turtles that are in their 40s. Most of our patients end up being pretty young, only a couple of years old. We did have a 500 pound leatherback wash up uh, in 2018. Uh, and I'm not really sure how old that leatherback sea turtle was, but typically we get juveniles in. Good questions, everyone. All right, so I have another program to uh, head to now, but thank you all so much for tuning in to this Facebook Live. I really appreciate all your questions and participation. Uh, stay tuned. We post these Facebook Lives from time to time, whether it's patient releases, a feeding, things like that. Thank you all so much, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye.